Good morning, all of my amazing mothers. Um, it's actually not so morning, but again, we find me drinking coffee again at 10.30 a.m. Why I feel compelled to drink coffee when I talk to you is, I'm not sure why, but I'm having a late start a little bit today. Anyway, we are here today, Wednesday, January, I believe it is the 18th. And it's 10.30 a.m. EST, and I'm popping in here like I do every Wednesdays. There is a bunch of new people in the group, so just a quick little intro about what we do here. Every Monday, there is a special question thread with a theme talking about something specific. Early rising, night wakings, bedtime battles. This week is Dropping Naps, the Overtired Saga. So what I do on Mondays, on Wednesdays, is I go through the Monday questions in that thread and go through and answer each and every one of your questions or as many as I can. I delegate a certain amount of time to go through these questions here. So I'm really excited to get going. And anyone, I did tell a few of you that if there was time at the end, you could pick my brain on a few random questions that are not part of this theme. But I think what we're going to start doing is there's been a lot of requests, a lot of amazing questions. Obviously, as this group grows, I can't come and answer every single one of your questions all the time because it's very detailed often. So what I think I'm going to start doing is once a week coming in a separate time just for a random pick my brain session. I think I'm going to do it Saturday night around 9.30 p.m. So stay tuned. If you are awake, then I would love to hop in and see you. But I'll give you an announcement on Friday um, or Saturday again just to keep you updated so you know to come to that. So that way you can ask me your questions if you don't necessarily have something that falls under this exact theme of what we're discussing, okay? So I'm just going to run through here. I see our first question you are here right now, my dear. All right, Leslie. Leslie asked, my daughter will be three in March and up till a few days ago would come home from playgroup at 1.45. Go in for a nap close to two and sleep till almost four. So about a two hour nap for your three year old from two to four. She had a very hard time going to sleep at night. Whoops, let's make this bigger. And usually would be up until about 8.45, 9 p.m. Wake up, get out of her crib multiple times. We just decided to drop her nap and see if that helps with bedtime and staying asleep. What are your thoughts? I'm going to tell you my thoughts, but I see you read something else. One other slight problem is now she's not napping, but she always falls asleep in the car when you're doing pickup at four, the carpool situation. All right. Leslie, I actually want to tell you I'm in the exact same boat as you. I just, my child, my, my two-year-old is not three, but we were having the exact same issues. And like I said, when you, if you've been to these Wednesday sessions, when we go through the Monday threads, you see a theme and you see things starting patterns, certain starting to repeat itself. So with my daughter, we had the same thing happening. She was two and three months now, two and four months, so not quite two and a half. She's taking an awesome two-hour nap every afternoon, even earlier. She was taking her nap at 11 a.m. and speaking for two, two and a half hours, 11 to 1, 11 to 1.30, 9, 9.30, 10 p.m. She wasn't climbing out, but she was just like having a crazy fest, screaming, playing, waking up her siblings. So we had to drop her nap. Now I'm experiencing the same situation that you are right now, Leslie. When a child is in transition mode, which is exactly what's happening with your three-year-old, our bodies and children's bodies don't just magically snap and say, oh, well, I'm done taking a nap, so all right, let's go, let's do this, because their body is accustomed to taking a nap all the time. And quite frankly, I'm an adult, and I get tired in the day, right? Staying up a full 12 hours for me is hard. So especially a child that's still adjusting to their body not needing this nap, but still you know, being used to it, it's in this transitional period. So it's very normal when your child is in this state that they might conk out in the afternoons, they might still be really tired just because their body isn't yet totally normalized to not napping. So that's normal for sure. And when you're in that transitional period, you have to just expect that. But what to do to navigate your life is a separate question, okay? If you know every single day you have carpool at 4 p.m. and every single day she falls asleep, you're gonna have to technically set yourself up. So my question for you is you're actually on here, so let me ask you. Is she sleeping for that full 20 minutes in the car? And answer me, Leslie, is she sleeping for that full 20 minutes in the car? And then what's happening at bedtime? Is bedtime still an issue? Is she still fighting bedtime or it's not being necessarily affected? Because if it's smooth and bedtime is okay and she's conking out in the car for those 15, 20 minutes, but like, eh, she still goes to bed all right, I would say honestly, I always offer the best sleep advice, but my goal is that you can manage it with your life. We don't just like create these ideas up in the heavens and then say apply it to your life where it's not practical. So Leslie, if you can, let me know if she's sleeping for that entire time during 
that car ride for about 20 minutes when you do carpool pickup? And is it negatively affecting bedtime still? That's the key component because if it isn't, honestly, you got to do what works. I know you have a you know, quite a few kids and you're juggling this one and that one. It does affect negatively affect bedtime. So what time, Leslie, is she going to sleep now? Is she fighting it as much? Is it still till 9, 30, 10 p.m.? So if she's fighting bedtime, then yes, you got to nick this in the bud. Only because if she's going to constantly conk out, this transitional mode can sometimes last weeks and weeks and sometimes a few months, especially if a child's body gets used to sleeping every day at 4 p.m. when you're in the car. So can you, she always fights it. Okay, so can you get a babysitter? and help you out and stay home with her when you do carpool, or have the babysitter do carpool. Can you distract her in the car? When you start seeing her conk out, can you like put on the music and the songs and the dances and everything like that? Can you have some like ammunition in your car, some like treats and wafers and pretzels and apples or whatever you wanna give her to keep her awake? At the end of the day, life is life and you can't, you know, we can't, if you can't get help, you can't get someone to keep her awake, you can't keep her awake in the car, I will tell you now, this is going to sound crazy, when a child is dropping their nap, and I think I even told you this with another one of your children, I remember us talking about this, um, when your child's ready to drop a nap and they're in this transitional mode and still falling asleep in the afternoons, them sleeping for longer than 12 or 13 minutes actually tricks their body to think that they've completed an entire sleep cycle. No joke. So if you can and you see she falls asleep, I would definitely, definitely try to make sure she doesn't sleep longer than 12, 13 minutes max in the car. Now, I know that's hard because you're driving and you're this and you're that. Have your other kids on board. Have them try to wake her up and distract her and have it be fun. At the end of the day, you can only do your best, right? And worst case scenario, she'll continue fighting bedtime until her body adjusts and no longer falls asleep in the car at 4 p.m. Ideally, what time she should go to bed if she's not napping um, again, these are just averages because every child is completely different, so I'm just giving you statistics. She may fall under it, may not fall under it. A three-year-old who's not napping, assuming she's waking up around, I know your kids wake up early, so let's say in the sixes, um, if she's waking up around six and not napping all day, typically she's going to be able to go to bed around 12, 12 and a half hours later, around 6.30, 6.45 p.m., but if she's napping, especially if she's conking out in the car at 4 p.m. for 20 minutes and it's affecting her bedtime, then that's when it gets in that gray area. So like I said, A, technically try to set yourself up that she won't be in the car with you. B, if you can't control that, then do your best to keep her awake. C, if she falls asleep, try to wake her up so she's not sleeping past that 12, 13 minutes. Get and cut your kids involved in the ammunition of the snack bag or whatever you need to help you. And D, worst case scenario, welcome to life. It's not always perfect. And it might take a few weeks for her body to adjust to not being so tired at 4 p.m. And what can you do, right? You're a busy mom. Got to do carpool. You're not going to leave your kids in school saying, sorry, my, sorry, I don't want my three-year-old to nap, so I'm just not going to pick you up. Of course not. So, you know, we have to sometimes roll with the punches. It's not always ideal, but that's what it's like when we have a few kids and you got to run around and do things, okay? So that's Leslie. Let me go down to the next question. Those of you who are just coming on, at the end, if there is time, I told a few of you I would answer your questions, but we are going to do a live Pick My Brain Saturday night on anything you want, not in the question thread. So stay tuned. We'll probably do that around 9.30 p.m., but I will keep you updated. Okay. Know me. My daughter is three and a half. At daycare, the entire room goes for a nap. So does she. She never naps on weekends, and when she's not at daycare, we usually do bedtime between 7.30 and 8 p.m., when it, whether it's at school or not, but in school days, she's just not tired. Mm-hmm. Okay, know me. Number one, it sounds like, I want to tell you, most three-and-a-half-year-olds do not need to be napping anymore. Again, averages, just giving myself the, uh, you know, the staple of uh, being politically correct. Most, most, most three-and-a-half-year-olds do not need to nap anymore. Yes, there are some kids that nap till they're four, four-and-a-half, but they are definitely the low end of the spectrum. So Nomi, <coughs> what I want you to do is, if possible, can you ask them at daycare to stop napping her? I had this happen a few years ago with one of my kids where I just asked them, you know, they didn't have to sit there and entertain because the daycare has their structure and they have the way they do things, but maybe they could sit on the floor with her and quietly read a book. Maybe she can be the little helper and help them cut out the projects that they're preparing for the kids after the nap or help set up lunch or do something so that way they don't feel like she's just sitting there you know, watching all her friends sleep because, my goodness, that's boring. But on the same token, they can still even and maybe be helped by her. That's number one. Number two, when a child naps Monday through Friday, and then on the weekends when she's home with you, Saturday and Sunday, or whatever the structure is of when she's at daycare, 
that is very inconsistent. Okay, now I know a lot of you think, well, no big deal. My child has this schedule when they're at daycare and this schedule when they're home with me. Okay, sometimes there's nothing to do about it and we have to navigate that, but know me, every five days happens every five days and it's for two days is the weekend or more if she's home with you on Friday or on Monday. So if she's not napping every five days, that's like throwing her internal clock off a lot. She's napping, she's napping, she's napping. Potentially her body would get in a rhythm and not fight bedtime, but whoop, back to the weekend, I'm not napping and I conk out. And it's this like constant yo-yo back and forth that makes it really difficult for a body to adjust. But independently, you said that she's fighting bedtime. That is for a child this age, okay? Not for necessarily younger babies, but for a child in the two and a half to three and a half range, fighting bedtime is like big red flashing lights. They need to get rid of their nap. So if you can have daycare on board, try to get rid of that nap. Try to mirror the same consistency when you're home because if she's not napping there, I don't want you to suddenly decide you want to nap around the weekends. You gotta do the same thing every single day to help her body's rhythms adjust properly, okay? Now again, I'm not here to be like sleep drill sergeant and tell you, you must always, it must always, it has to be. But obviously the more consistency you offer for your child, the better they're gonna respond because again, we are creatures of habit and our bodies work on internal rhythms doing the same thing daily, okay? This coffee looks bigger than it is, by the way, just in terms of the camera. It is a big cup, but it's not like as big as it looks as I'm looking at it. It's like the size of my face. It's not quite that big. Okay, Anna, Anna, Anna. Okay, Anna, your almost six month old is dropping from three naps to two naps and a cat nap around dinner time. The problem is he's really resisting and does not go down easily. If he skips it, I'm assuming you're talking about the third nap, Anna. If he skips, where did I go? If he skips it entirely, his night sleep is ruined from too big of a gap between the afternoon nap and nighttime. Got it. So what is a good amount of awake time for a six month old and how do I manage the last cat nap? The days he has done it, he's much better sleeping through the night. Okay, this is an awesome question. All of you have awesome questions, but this is a very common question. People come about usually in the six to nine month bracket. Now I wanna tell you, most babies until six months of age, five and a half, need to be taking three naps a day. Now that's happening because they need the cumulative amount of day sleep, but it's also happening because their sleep window is so, so narrow that they can't stay awake for long periods of time. Most babies, anywhere ranging from six, between six to nine months, and I know that's a broad gap, but any, most babies between six to nine months are ready to drop that third nap, Anna, exactly what's happening, but your baby is in transition mode. Exactly like I just told Leslie, this transitional period is really hard because your baby might be able to stay awake from that second nap to bedtime, but has been acclimated to always going to sleep every two hours or every two and a half hours. That's the most common window there. So it's kind of like this discrepancy. I'm tired because I'm used to sleeping, but I don't wanna sleep because my body doesn't want to and I can't stay awake that long till bedtime. So this is a really, really difficult transitional period. And again, it's about patience and persistence. So let's first talk about if your baby needs that third nap or not. It's hard to say, but it sounds like from what you're describing, your baby probably does, but probably needs it later. So number one, you have to make a decision. Are you okay with a later bedtime? Because, it, because Anna, if you offer a later third nap, then bedtime is also gonna be a little later, okay? So I don't know the exact times of everything, but most likelihood is you're gonna have to make that window between naps two and nap three longer. Typically a six month old baby between morning and nap number one is two hours of awake time. Between naps one and nap two is usually two to two and a half hours, okay? Then between naps two and nap three, your baby might be able to go three hours. Not much longer usually, maybe three and a half. So theoretically, if your baby's waking up from that second nap at two, usually you'd offer that third nap at four, but they're like smiling at you, your baby has no interest. So offer that third nap, if they've woken up at two, offer it at five. But here's the tricky one. Don't let that third nap be longer than a half an hour, okay? Now I know against, it goes against all your maternal instincts to wake up your sleeping child, but if you wanna make sure that there's still good night sleep intact, you gotta do this. I'm not saying to go in and with like pots and pans and say, wake up, you know, and be like very disruptive. Open the shades, you're loving, you're gentle, it's time to get up, I wanna help you. Wake your baby up. So if your baby's up by 5.30, then you can still have a normal bedtime still around eight-ish eight o'clock or so, but you have to decide that it's okay with you to have a later bedtime, Anna. If it's not, then you just gotta rip the bandaid off and say, okay, you're ready to drop this third nap, let's do it. But that means you have to bump bedtime earlier. If your baby's waking up from that second nap at two, like I said, by five, 5.30, your baby's going to be falling on his face exhausted. Is it a boy 
Yes, falling on his face exhausted. So in such a case, then what you're going to have to do is bump bedtime to be a little earlier, you know, around, hopefully you can stretch to 6, 6.30 or so until that adjustment period gets kind of coupled over and your baby is able to stay awake consistently from the second nap until bedtime, which at that point you can start moving. Oh, bedtime's fine with you. Okay, great. So go with number one, but I just want to finish it, which at that point, once your baby adjusts, then you can start making bedtime later at a more normal hour. So if bedtime's okay with you, I would start with that because you know when your baby takes a good third nap, it just facilitates good night's sleep. So I would start doing what I just told you, making the third nap later, Anna, and then in turn making bedtime slightly later. There will come a point in time in a few weeks, though, where that third nap, there's nothing to talk about. doesn't matter if it's four, five, or six. Your baby is not interested. At that point, you're going to have to just drop it completely and then make bedtime a little earlier, like I just said, around 6.15, 6.30. And slowly, as your baby is able to stay awake better and longer from that second nap, make 6.30 to 6.45 to 7 to whatever your normal bedtime is. Transitions are transitions. Just like we have to get used to when we get married and like living with this human being. And oh my gosh, this is so crazy. Like I'm used to having everything to myself. Just like we have to transition when we get a new hairdo or when we have a baby. Like everything. There's small and little. But transitional periods are hard because we're in it and you're thrown into this new circumstance but you might not be ready for it. So be mindful of when the overtiredness kicks in, when your babies are ready to transition in and out of certain naps you want to try to like navigate around it to make sure. Yeah, I would do bedtime. Yeah, I would do, Anna, the third nap around three hours from the second nap. So theoretically, two, wakes up at two, goes down at five, sleeps five to 5.30. Yeah, and have bedtime again around three hours later if it works. Now, if it doesn't work and you see still fighting, fighting, then you're going to have to go to scenario two. Rip off the third nap band-aid, suck it up, wait a few weeks and your baby will adjust, Okay. Let's see, who else do we have here? We have Samantha, same question as Anna. Oh, okay, I hope we answered it, but let's see. Samantha, seven month old, is switching from three naps to two. Her first nap is two hours after she wakes. I like that, that's perfect, that's what I just said, typically around nine. When is a good time for the second nap? Uh, depends how long your baby's first nap is. Again, like I told you, naps one and two for a baby around six, seven months is typically between two to two and a half hours from when they woke up. So it depends. She, go down, she goes down around 1. She'll sleep well, but seems to be too much awake time till bedtime. Okay, so Samantha, I want you to watch what we just told Anna to do. Number one, are you okay with late bedtime? If you are, go for what I just told Anna. Be aware it may work, it may not work. If it doesn't, or whenever your baby transitions out of the third nap completely, then you go to scenario two. Rip off the third nap band-aid and just have an earlier bedtime, distract your baby, and within a few weeks' time, they will adjust. Um, unlike Leslie, whose baby, who's three-year-old, still a baby in my book, but unlike Leslie's three-year-old, it takes can sometimes take weeks and weeks and weeks to adjust from going to one nap to no nap. In this transition from two naps to three, we're talking a weeks, like one, two, maybe three weeks of adjustment. So if you can stick it out, your baby will be able to stay awake happily, okay? Lindsay. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, Lindsay was one of the questions I said I will address at the end. So Lindsay, I'm going to get back to you in a minute. Lauren, my two-year-old, 29 months, is dropping a nap, but she's exhausted by 5 or 6 p.m. She's a monster until bedtime. She wakes up around 8 a.m. daily. What do we do about this 5 to 7 time frame to make it easier? Would moving bedtime earlier mean waking earlier? She also wakes up once a night for fresh diaper and a little milk. Okay. So you can mess around with it, but if you like the 8 a.m. wake up, typically speaking, a child's internal clock is set usually by bedtime. Bedtime is kind of just the underlying baseline and skeleton for sleep, really, in, in general, just in a nutshell. So if you like the 8 a.m. wake up, I wouldn't recommend making bedtime suddenly 5 p.m. when she starts getting irritable because guess what? Eight's going to turn into six, turn into five, and maybe four. So what I recommend doing is, yes, you can bump bedtime up a little bit, but not too much, Lauren. I don't know what time she's going to bed. I would assume around seven because you said the five to seven mark is what's hard, maybe 7.30. You can bump it up a little bit if she's going to bed. You know, make it 10, 15 minutes earlier than normal. But really, like I just told Leslie, it's the transitional period. Your baby is used to, your two-year-old is used to sleeping every single day of her life for her entire existence. And now she's suddenly expected to stay awake for 12 hours straight. It's a very stimulating world out there. And kids get tired. And like I said, we get tired as parents. And, you know, we have to just be mindful of that and help her adjust, distract her. I'm okay if she has some rest time. 
around 5 p.m. But be careful that the rest time doesn't turn into sleep time or a nap time. Maybe coloring, listening to a story. I wouldn't necessarily have rest time be cuddling up in her bed with a blanket and a pillow because hello, she's going to go to sleep. But quiet time, downtime, because a lot of times kids, when they're giving up their nap, yes, they're more irritable because their body's adjusting to getting less sleep. But on the same token, they're just overstimulated. And sometimes that nap just gives them a break from the world. So you can kind of create that calm atmosphere and let her brain kind of zone out the same way a nap would by... And I don't even mean screen time because that's like another situation altogether, which I wouldn't recommend. Maybe we could do a live on that is the truth because that's a big issue with sleep screen time. But don't do screen, don't use screen time. Don't stick her in front of a video or a TV show. Have her color, have her listen to a story, have some light music in the background. You read her a story, something that just like helps her brain process things and be somewhere else without using a screen because... I think a screen will not help the situation, and I'll explain that maybe later if we have time. So just give her ample time to kind of get herself out of that overstimulation and that crankiness while allowing her to last till bedtime. And like I said, you can make bedtime 10, 15 minutes earlier, but I wouldn't mess with it too much because you don't want to reset that clock. Okay, Andy. My eight-month-old takes three naps a day. First nap is at nine, seconds between one and two, and thirds around six. His bedtime ends up being so late because of that last nap, but sleeping through the night... Ooh, thanks to my advice. I'm so happy. Great. That's amazing, Andy. Fantastic. Okay. We start his bedtime routine at 8.30. He's asleep by 9 and wakes up at 7. Is it worth it to drop the third nap and put him to bed earlier? Okay, Andy, number one rule with anything is that something's only a problem if you feel it is. Don't decide that you need to rearrange nap just because bot your said between six to nine months babies drop their third nap. You know, if you're okay with the late bedtime and it's working, keep it. My general rule is if it's not broken, don't fix it. Okay. So if you're okay with that, great. But if you feel like your nine month old is fighting the third nap or you don't like having the late bedtime and it's not working for you or it's not working for your baby, then yes, that would be time to get rid of that third nap. And instead of a nap at six, make a you know, bedtime a little later around seven, seven thirty. Now, like I said, like I just told, um, I think that was, who was that? I just want to get the names right here. Like I just told Lindsay, no, not Lindsay, Samantha, like I just told um, Samantha, Andy, when you make a bedtime earlier, it is the baseline for all sleep. So if you make bedtime earlier, it's definitely possible your child might wake up a little earlier. So you have to be ready for the risks, quote unquote, involved. But like I said, it's only a problem if you feel it is. And if it's working and you're okay with it, keep it. If it's not working and you feel like things need to change because she's not really wanting to go down for that nap, you're not happy with not having evenings to yourself, whatever, then you can work on dropping that third nap and making bedtime a little earlier, but it's only temporary, the early bedtime. You can, as she adjusts, like I told everyone else, over the course of a few weeks, not longer when you're getting rid of a third nap, bump bedtime to be later. Is it going to be 9 p.m.? Probably not, but 7.30, 8 o'clock, you might be able to stretch her, if, especially if she continues waking up late in the morning. Okay, Jenna, you're... Oh, it's a long one. Don't worry, I like long ones. I just have to scroll down. Okay. <laughs> Jenna, your 11-month-old is on two naps a day. Lately, it's lately has been taking almost an hour to lay her down for a nap because she's so fidgety. We change her diaper, read, usually nurse a little. Then she lays down several times, but within 20 seconds, she is moving around again. She thinks it's funny and a game, and we lay her down over and over. Sounds like a game of Jack in the Box. Okay. Now, if I put her in her crib for a few minutes, she realizes I'm serious and she really cries. Then I can lay back in the co-sleeping bed and she falls asleep. No widgeting, wiggling, no fidgeting. Okay, it's been an hour trying to put her to sleep though. This is like most the most backwards way. I feel like it will never get her to sleep in her crib, but I feel like I don't know what else to do. The most backwards way you mean that you have to wait till she's tired and let her cry and then put her in. I think that's what you mean. Do I nurse her until she is sleepy? Do I feel like she will always have a nursing association? I've been trying to nurse less, but know how long it should take. A week? Okay, there's a lot of questions going on with this, Jenna. A lot of different things just kind of playing out here. Let's break it down. Number one, 11-month-old on two naps. Perfect. I'm fine with that. But the timing of the naps might be off. If a child is tired in an ideal space for sleep, and if you've seen my other lives and you've read my articles, you know how I feel I call it the sweet spot for sleep, the right sleep window. I don't care what you call it, but it means the ideal time, Jenna, when your baby is ready to go to sleep, whether it's bedtime, a nap. If you catch any child, any baby at this sweet spot for sleep, they're not going to fight it. 
what's happening is it sounds like here, Jenna, is your baby is so overtired, that's why she gets fidgety. She gets her second wind, she fights sleep more, she's unable to wind down. So I would first play around with the timing of naps. Um, you're here now, Jenna, why don't you tell me what time does your baby typically wake up in the morning? And what time do you offer the naps? And how long are the naps? Because if you're waiting too long and keeping your baby awake too long, Jenna, then that independently is going to cause her to fight sleep. And it doesn't matter if you nurse her, shake her, put her in the co-sleeper, let her scream, or you go upside down by your head singing songs and dances. She's in that wired zone of point of no return. And it's of course it's going to take an hour to wind her down. So, so before it was 6.30, wake up. 9.30 to 10 nap, okay? And how about the second nap, Jenna? So the first nap was about a half an hour. What about the second nap? Let me know what time the second nap was and how long it was. I can't get over how large this coffee thing looks on the camera. Oh, okay. Then wake up at 12. Oh, 9.30 or 10 nap till 12. Got it. And then the next nap. Do I need to scroll down? No, I got it. The first nap's two hours. Um, just let me know when the next nap is and how long it is. And I want to know if she's fighting both naps, 3.30 to 4. All right, so what I'm going to tell you to do here, Jenna, is before I've been working on teaching her how to sleep, let me just scroll up and see what's going on here. You have a, First, we've got to get her internal clock shifted to make sure her nap structure is going well. Because honestly, I would actually switch this, usually 45 minutes, okay? I would like to see her shorter nap in the morning and her longer nap in the afternoon. Why do I do this? What happens is, when she completes so many sleep cycles for her second nap and sleeps two, two and a half hours around that 9, 30, 10 mark, her body has quote unquote met her sleep quota of the day. It doesn't work like this, but just for our purposes of our conversation. Her body thinks, okay, I'm done sleeping. I don't need to nap anymore. Great, I'm ready to go. But the problem is she needs more than one nap and she can't stay awake from 12 p.m. till bedtime. So it comes around 3 o'clock, 3.30 when you offer that second nap and her body's thinking, well, oh my gosh, I'm really tired, but I don't need to sleep more. I already slept so long for that first nap and fights it, fights it, fights it, fights it, fights it. So what I would actually like to see, Jenna, is if she's waking up at 9.30, I'm fine, um, 6.30, I'm fine if she goes down for a nap at 9.30. But I'd like to see that first nap under an hour. Now again, I'm always telling you it's okay to wake up a sleeping baby, but it is because in order to reset her internal clock, you got to take the reins and actively help her reset it. She's been up at 5.30 and falling asleep at 8. Okay, so fine. Either way, let's just go with this rule, okay? Try to offer that first nap around 9, 9.30 and have that nap be less than an hour, 45 minutes or so, hour max. Go in gently, wake her up. So theoretically, she'll sleep 9 to 10. 9.30 to 10.30, depending. And then you can offer that second nap drastically earlier. Instead of her taking her second nap at 3.30 or 4 and only sleeping a half an hour, we want that second nap to be earlier and longer. So if she's sleeping 9 to 10 or 9.30 to 10.30, she's 11 months, she could go down around 1, let's say. And this is just approximate. And I'd like to see that nap be about that be the long run two hours. Now what's gonna happen is she's not gonna start magically sleeping two hours just because we decided so. She might not be watching this live right now with us, okay? Now, that means when she wakes up, try to get her back to sleep and get her body acclimated to sleeping longer stretches at that time. She might wake up after a half an hour because her body's used to sleeping only a half an hour for that second nap. So when she wakes, sleeps from one to 1.30, Nurse her back to sleep. Cuddle her back to sleep. Do whatever you can. Don't worry about the sleep association. You can deal with that later. The most important thing first is to get her internal rhythm set up that she's sleeping at the times we want. And that, Jenna, is going to make her stop fighting bedtime, stop or stop fighting her naps. And you do that for three, four, five days. You can come in, let us know how it's doing. I will try to remember to respond to yours because, like I said, I can't always respond to the questions in here. But I'm going to make a note here. I would like to see in three, four, five days time her going to sleep a lot better for her naps because she won't fight it because her internal clock is shifted properly. Then you can worry about what the sleep association is and the nursing and the crying and the no crying and the this and the that. But first you want to set it up from the ground up, okay? Jenny. My five-month-old, my five-month-old is in the process of dropping her nap of the day, her last nap of the day. We're seeing a lot of this. You're my pleasure, okay? All right, so my five-month-old is in the process of dropping her last nap of the day. We're seeing a lot of this shifting from three naps to two naps. She has never been a good sleeper. Her morning wake time is 6.30 most mornings. She starts one hour. She only stays awake one hour, 20 minutes between naps. I'm just skimming through this. 
9 to so from 8 to 9, 10:30 to 11:30. Oh, wow. Okay. By 7:30 she's a crying mess. She is up every 2 hours. My question is should I try to extend her awake time during the day? Yes. Okay. Jenny, 6 month old baby staying awake an hour 20 minutes. That's just way too short. Okay? I know it's hard and it's painful, but the reason she can't stay awake so long is cuz she's overtired and she's like compensating during the day for lost night sleep. So, if she's waking up she can't stay awake for longer than one hour, 20 minutes at this age. Again, big red flashing lights to me. She's just really overtired, which I'm sure you don't need me to tell you. So what I would like to see is trying to extend it. It's not going to be magical and it's not like you can suddenly go from an hour and 20 minutes to two hours or two and a half hours like I told the other moms with six, seven month old babies, but it's a process. An hour and 20 minutes is how long a two month old can stay awake. A two and a half month old, a newborn we're talking here. So. Make it your mission over the next week to extend awake time. I would like to see her taking those three naps. The reason she's ready to drop her last nap of the day is because that last nap of the day in her body's mind is like the fourth nap or the fifth nap because she's taking such short spouts. So now she's staying awake an hour, 20 minutes. Try to spend the next two, three days bumping it to an hour and a half. And then after that's going well, hour, 40 minutes hour 45. You know, the goal is to have her asleep at the two hour mark. You don't necessarily need to start winding her down at two hours, but I would like to see that awake time longer because that is going to help her sleep better for naps, go down better for nights, and actually improve night sleep and less night wakings too. Because when a baby's overtired, it comes out and portrays itself in night wake ups a lot of the time. A lot of the time when I work with families one on one, they think that there's a sleep dependency and a sleep association and I have to get rid of the pacifier and this. But really when you reconfigure the day sleep, not all the time, but a lot of the time, when you reconfigure the day sleep, a lot of times there's so many shifts going on under the surface that the night sleep comes along with it in a positive way. Okay, Ramya, and I hope I am saying your name right. Just started dropping naps. Okay, I have a question. My three and a half year old turning four in April, he just started dropping naps. He will go down if I insist, but I don't because it gets late if he sleeps in the afternoon. Otherwise from seven oops, otherwise from seven thirty PM to six thirty AM about eleven hours. But if he has a nap, it's from two to three or four, which is very, very late, Ramya. What's a reasonable amount of sleep for a three and a half year old? Three and a half year old, like I said, most three and a half year olds are not napping. Some are. But in your case, if you have to force the nap, then there's no reason to force it at all. And anyway, taking it so late in the day, your child doesn't need it. If they're not going to sleep for their nap till 2 or 2.30 every single day, then likelihood is you can stretch them out till bedtime. I'm okay. On average, a three and a half year old needs about 11 hours of night sleep. That's pretty normal. Some need more, some need less. So Ramya, I would really, really try hard to consistently not have the nap. And just like I told Leslie and just like I told Samantha and everyone else, when you're going from one nap to zero naps and your child is in that transitional place, it's hard because your baby, your child is used to sleeping every single day and their back body doesn't magically snap into it and say, oh, okay, I'm ready to stay awake 12 hours. So you got to keep your baby awake. They might be more irritable. The late afternoons might be hard. We talked a lot about different ideas of how to help them kind of unwind and process the stimulating world without sleep, without screen time, because I said that's a separate issue, because just a little hint about that, the way our brains work and our eyes work when we're watching a screen, actually, it has a lot of different hormonal effects in terms of sleep, but I'm not going to get into that. If you want to do it, fine. It's not going to end the world, but I would try to stick with more coloring, stories, wind down, relaxing, quiet music, okay? Haley, all right. Haley, 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 okay. My daughter is five and a half months old and she goes to bed at 6 p.m. every night. We dream feed her. She wakes up around 2, 3. I'm just skimming through this. I try nursing her back to sleep. My question is how can I stop her wanting to be awake for that hour? Let's see. Try nursing her back to sleep, feeding nothing else. I think this is more of a night waking question. So I'm going to come to this in a minute because I think we are going to have time. So Haley and Lindsay, I'm going to come back to your questions when we're done with this actual thread. Okay, Brianne. My nine month old was a good sleeper, but he seems to be dropping from two naps to one nap, although it's incredibly early for me. Yes, nine months is extremely early to go from two naps to one nap. Then of course he's overtired. I don't even know what my question is since it seems more of a statement. <laughs> okay, but I need help. Okay, Brianne, let's see if you wrote something else. Oh, here we go. His schedule was 7 a.m. nap at 9.15 to 11.15, nap two from 1.30 to 2.30, bedtime seven. Night wakings going on. Okay, 
right, but he's had viruses, he's been sick, there's been a few different things going on. I'm just trying to read through, he's had ear infections, but it used to be he'd wake up at 8, nap at 11 to 11.45. Okay, he seems to have completely lost the ability to fall asleep or stay asleep. So Brianne, I agree with you completely. This is more of an issue of setting up things properly with his naps. Forget teaching him how to sleep, because just like I just told everyone else, it's an issue of his internal clock needing to reset itself. So that's the most important thing I recommend here. And just like I told someone else a few minutes ago, I, in your case, I think I would recommend having that first nap be shorter. Because if you're gonna be able to do that, it's gonna help facilitate a longer second nap, which is gonna really help with everything. The nap fighting is probably happening again, because they're taking that hour and a half nap or so, two hours even, 9.15 to 11.15 in the morning, your baby thinks, oh, well, I've slept enough during the day and then fights the sleep a lot more later on, which makes it more difficult for them to take a good nap. So uh, rewind this if you're watching the replay here, but my recommendation is to have that first nap around 9.15, 9.30 be no longer than an hour, 45 minutes or so, 45 minutes or an hour, sorry, no cap it at an hour, and then offer that second nap still around the same time, still around in the one somewhere, but let that be the longer nap, and I think that's gonna help because I do not recommend a nine month old taking only one nap a day. That is just going to be an overtired saga, and whatever your nights are, they're just gonna get worse because your baby's gonna be really overtired. And overtiredness cause nights wake causes night wake ups. Erin. My daughter went from being an amazing sleeper. Now she wakes up three to five times at night to nurse. Oh, we're done here. So I'm going to go through the non-nap question threads. And anyone who's watching live can ask me. But like I said, we're going to have a pick my brain session Saturday night unrelated to this thread if we get cut off because I do have to go at 1120 here. Okay, but let's see. We'll see how many we can get in here. All right, Erin, your daughter went from being an amazing sleeper. Now she wakes up three to five times at night to nurse. She's 14 months old. It's like she consistently needs to be nursed consistently needs you to nurse her. It's horrible, you co-sleep. Okay, so if you want Erin, and I'm scrolling up to the other, there were two more questions I told people I would answer that are unrelated to the thread. Okay, Erin, if you scroll back to the night wake-ups, we did a whole live thread about that, about sleep dependencies and how to teach a baby how to go back to sleep. What you wanna do is get rid of that sleep dependency. If your child is completely acclimated to nursing, 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 what does that mean? That means your child constantly needs the nursing to fall asleep, which in essence means you are constantly recreating a sleep environment for your child and they're unable to independently fall asleep. So what you wanna do is Replace that sleep dependency that you are doing, Erin, with something else, another form of comfort, whether it's holding, whether it's rocking, whether it's shaking, whether it's patting, and help your baby's body acclimate to lasting longer stretches in the night, coupled with this idea. If your baby is nursing all night, even if you know your 14-month-old can go 10 hours, and I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself for those of you who have seen this, but it's important that Erin hears this, okay? If your baby you know can go, and a 14-month-old can go eight, nine hours, or 12 hours for that matter, okay? Um, you can't just magically say, sorry, I'm not going to nurse you all night because I know you can because your baby's habit has turned into avid hunger and you have to be mindful of that. So pick times that you feel comfortable with, maybe every three hours, maybe every four hours, depends on what your nights look like, Erin. And every time before your baby wakes up, before the designated time that you have set, use an alternate method to soothe whether it's the padding or the rocking or the bouncing. And once that's set up, then you can work on phasing off of that dependency by gently incorporating other ideas. We're gonna talk a lot about it in my course that's gonna be up and running um, really soon, so I'll give you more details because it's going live next week, which I'm very excited about. But the first thing is to first make sure that you can get rid of that association of nursing, because nursing is one of the harder ones to break. Replace it with something else, still a form of comfort, while spacing out the nighttime nursings also, okay? Oh, it's okay. Everyone misspells my name, Ramya. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. Let's see. Who else had questions that I said I would answer? I think it was Lindsay. Yeah. Okay, Lindsay. My four-month-old is fighting sleep during the day and night for us. Seems to sleep fine at daycare, but at home, it's a different story. If we hold her and keep the pacifier in, she will sleep for a decent amount of time. But as soon as we lay her down in the crib, she screams and screams as if we're doing the pacifier plugs or soothing every couple of hours. How can we get to soothe her and stay asleep? Okay, so Lindsay, Lindsay, which we are going over the extra questions here. This is a sleep dependency, and I'm curious what they do at daycare that is so different than what you do at home. Just wondering, because it's very possible that they don't play this game. And I'm just saying, your baby, even at four months old, knows the difference when your baby 
boy or girl when she's with mommy versus when she's at daycare. And she knows that eventually you will continue to plug the pacifier back in and help her over and over. So I'm not saying to not do that. I don't want her to scream and I'm not telling you to scream it out and I don't think you want to do that or you wouldn't be asking because you would. But in such a case, you want to phase her off that dependency. I would first ask them exactly what they do at daycare and try to mirror that at home. Maybe they're using a different sleep routine. Maybe they're doing a different wind down process. Maybe they put her to sleep in a completely different way and they don't even use the pacifier and she only needs that at home. First ask them what they're doing because if she's sleeping well at daycare and not at home with you, likelihood is it's totally inconsistent and they're doing something totally out of left field. Now, in a case where they're not and it's not totally different, then I would try to work on, like I just told Aaron, slowly phasing off that sleep dependency of the pacifier. Maybe give the pacifier until she's starting to wind down and then take it away and hold her without the pacifier to when she's calm and pat her without the pacifier. So you can replace the current sleep dependency with another form of comfort. And then as that goes, you kind of repeat that process, get rid of the comfort, get rid of the comfort. But I would first talk to your daycare to see what the story is that they are doing so very different, okay? There was another question in here. I can't remember who it was. That was totally unrelated here. Jenny, if you're watching, I'm sorry. I might have to hop back in here because I know there was a third question unrelated to the thread. Anyone on here? I have a few more minutes. If you want to ask me a question, oh, Leslie, does this also work for a six-month-old? I don't know when you wrote that. I think when you were talking about dropping naps probably. Like I said, any nap dropping issue we talked about, whether it's from three naps to two naps around that six month bracket, definitely you're going to want to apply the same ideas that I told everyone else because babies transition from three naps to two naps around six to nine months, okay? If that is it, I'm going to try to go through this. I, for some reason, can't see here on my laptop who that third question was from. Okay. Wondering what an ideal schedule would be for a six month old. Okay, Leslie, nap wise. Okay, yeah, I can't find this other question. I'm sorry if I skipped you, but like I said, we're gonna be doing a live random pick my brain on whatever you want, okay, really soon on Saturday night. So let's see. Okay, wondering what ideal schedule. Again, this is such a difficult question to answer, Leslie, because um, every baby's so different. Typically, and I'm just giving averages, okay? And it's going to be in my new sleep guide. By the way, thank you so much for all of your opinion as to the title because I'm rewriting it. I wrote it like five years ago. It's time to uh, up the ante. Um, typically speaking, a six-month-old can stay awake between morning and nap number one for two hours, nap one and nap number two from two to two and a half hours, and whether or not they are taking a third nap depends on all the other ideas we spoke about. If they're taking a third nap, the third nap can be anywhere between two to three hours after the second nap and then bedtime later. I like to see cumulatively, Leslie, about, mm, I'd say four hours of day sleep, whether it's distributed through two naps or through three naps during the day, and then about 11 hours of night sleep. So I hope that helps. I would try to you know, stay in tune with your baby's cues and see, wow, how long can he stay awake? How long does, you know, does, when is that sweet spot for sleep for him and when does he start getting really irritable, okay? How can I make sure that I'm on top of that, that I don't miss that window because that's the most important thing with babies, really all children. Lauren, hi, how are you? It's been a long time. Okay, Rory is 20 months now. When did that happen? She grew up, okay. She's resisting bedtime more now. She doesn't show sleep niggles signals as much, rubbing her eyes like she used to. I was wondering when she should push her bedtime later. Uh, Lauren, tell me, what does Rory's schedule look like? Is she, I'm assuming she's napping once. So tell me, when does she wake up? When is her nap? And when is bedtime? And then I can give you a little bit of a better answer, okay? While you're writing that, Lauren, I'm just going to hop and see who that third question was from. I feel really bad if I ignored you. Um, okay. And Lauren, let me know. I see you see she sleeps for two hours at 1.30. What time is she waking up? And what time is bedtime, Lauren? And then I'll be able to answer you to see what that is. I just want to look for this third question while you're writing it up, okay? I'm checking in to see. And anyone else who has a question, like I said, I have a few more minutes here after I answer Lauren. Um, I can't find it here. When is she waking up, Lauren? And when is bedtime? Okay, I'm sure you'll write it in a minute. But your question is, pushing her bedtime later is not necessarily what you want to do. Ah, okay, I recommend, if possible, Lauren, making the nap actually earlier. 
making bedtime later is not necessarily going to help. It might actually cause her to wake up earlier in the morning and kind of have a whole vicious cycle. Suggestion number one for you is to offer bed, uh, naps earlier, around 12 if you could. So that way she's sleeping 12 to 2. That's going to help a lot. Or 11... 11.30 to 1.30, something like that. If you can't rearrange her nap because of daycare, or I know your mom watches her, it doesn't work for the schedule, whatever it is, Lauren, if you can't rearrange it, then I would try to make bedtime maybe slightly earlier, but I wouldn't mess with it more than about 20 minutes or so because then you're going to get into dangerous territory and I don't want her to start waking up early. You worked really hard to get her sleeping through the night and I don't want it to start sky rolling backwards. So I recommend making the nap actually earlier if you see that she's fighting bedtime because making the bedtime later is not always the most magical potion, especially in Rory's case. Okay. All right, that is that. If anyone else has a question, hit me up right now because I'm going to go soon. But stay tuned because I have some really exciting things in the works here. We're actually going to be running a contest next week in the group, which I'm really excited about. Um, in the meantime, we're going to have a sneak peek of this Rested Moms Club, which is basically a course that I just finished. I've been working on it for months. Okay, My whole system that I use with every client, whether it's in my sleep groups or one-on-one, -on -one, my entire system start to finish with for my courses for every single age. Newborns, two-year-olds, six-month-olds, one-year-olds, and all a bunch of videos and all documents that I send to my clients when I work with them is all going to be in this course. And we're going to have, I'm launching it officially next week. I'm going to be having a contest next week for a few lucky people who want to win free access to this course and start getting your babies sleeping and checking out the course. I'm going to be having live question answers with me like this, except you're going to email me a whole detailed evaluation. I'm going to actually analyze your sleep situation. We're having a separate exclusive Facebook group called the Rested Moms Club where we're going to have guest speakers and all these other things going on and a lot of amazing questions. I see a lot of you are asking questions. I'm sorry. I have to hop out now. So I don't have time to get into detail with more questions now, but I'm going to come back on um, later on today and I'll go through those questions and try to answer you. But like I said, we're going to have a live pick my brain session Saturday night at 930. I will post um, a reminder for all of you on Friday probably. But until then, if you don't want to wait till the rest of Moms Club is up and you really want to talk to me about my sleep services or my sleep groups, I will post a link above in for my calendar. It's getting pretty booked up because I've been really busy with my groups, but we're having some more openings next week. If you want to hear more about my one-on-one -on -one services, my sleep services, how I can get the sleep back in your home, definitely hit the link there to schedule a call with me. Otherwise, please stay tuned. We're going to have contests next week for this Rested Moms Club course, which is my entire step-by-step -step system that I use just all in videos and all in amazing places. So, you know, if you're a do-it-yourself kind of parent and you want, you feel like you can take instructions and apply it, this is going to be awesome for you. All right, have an amazing Wednesday. I'm going to come back in later on and answer questions and try to find that third person that I didn't get to. And stay tuned for Saturday night when I'm going to do just a live pick my brain on whatever you want kind of thing. And then we're going to continue with these weekly threads. All right, have an amazing day.